It's the critical faith thing we're going to have to look at. Thank you. Having talked about being compliant and acting correctly, this wonderful word ethics, what do we mean by it? It's not really tangible. And I'm going to quote from a preface to ICAP's revised Code of Ethics, August 11, which I think puts it rather nicely. You say, and I agree with you, professional ethics is not all about misconduct. It is basically the moral fabric for a profession, and its practice is largely a measure of conscience. The stricter its self-imposed discipline, the nobler the image. I think it's a very good line to sort of base where we're going. Trouble is, in the marketplace, ethics is often confused with corporate governance, corporate responsibility, sustainability, and complying with rules of conduct. Now, those are always high on a board's agenda, and they're referred to quite frequently in the news. And they do, of course, involve the consideration of ethics, but they are not capable of being equated to ethical behavior. Ethical behavior might not feed into the income statement immediately. It has a much longer term effect on reputation and viability. It goes beyond obeying laws, rules and regulations, and it needs to be acceptable to the society in which we as a profession operate. In the UK, the great debate at the moment is, as I said earlier, evasion or avoidance for taxation. There are those who think that anything that means you don't pay your tax must be evasion. I don't subscribe to that view, but we do have to recognize the way thinking changes. So having said that, ethics, it's a bit of a gray area, forgive me for that. We have a sort of threats and safeguards approach at the ICAW, and ICAP, of course, as well. It's the IFAC code, if you think about it. We've all accepted this kind of approach. And there are five fundamental principles. Integrity, honesty, fair dealing, truthfulness, objectivity, not allowing bias, conflicts of interest, or undue influence to affect your judgment, competence and due care, keeping up to date properly, Confidentiality, we all know what that means, only telling people that you're allowed to tell them. And professional behavior, behaving in a professional manner at all times. But the threats and safeguards approach means, let's consider the threats. What are the threats we have to think about? If there are threats, let's apply some safeguards to actually counterbalance the threats. And if we can't find adequate safeguards, the answer is we don't do it. Forgive me, I'm going to make a point. Very often at the ICAW, we have a number of ethical support programs for members in business or members in practice. And by the time they get to ringing us up, by the time you've got an ethical problem in business, frankly, you are so imbued with the problem that it becomes very difficult. And what I'd like to do is just remind you briefly, or tell you briefly, what we make them do to begin with. And it may seem obvious, but the first thing, if you have an ethical problem we tell people to do, is establish the facts. Let's just start, and what is it that is the problem? Because by then you've got everything pouring on you. I was reminded of a rather fun little cartoon that was on my father's chairman's table, which I quite liked. It was a picture of a man surrounded by alligators in a pond. And what it said was, it is always difficult to remember that when you're up to your backside in alligators, the objective was to drain the lake. And at this particular point, the first stage is establishing the facts. Who or what should be involved and when? What are the organization's policies and procedures? Should we be contacting our superiors, the audit committee, the audit partner, human resources, our professional body? And what about the ethical principles? Consider whether we are complying with fundamental principles. Just try and analyze the particular problem in these headings. What are the threats to our principles? What are the safeguards? Can we use the safeguards to correct it? And are there specific requirements for this particular circumstance? And then look at what we could do. 
test the consequences of each course of action, look at how others would perceive what we're doing, and document the key actions that we're going to make. Now, I only pick that up because actually I think it sets the whole thing in, in scene. We might go on, what are we doing at the ICAEW? We have a thought leadership program in which we have been trying to bring together practical expertise, that is practical problems and case studies from members, from, I'm upset somebody now, theoretical input from academics as to what they think the position is, input from regulators, you might think sometimes that is theoretical, and investors, but it's important, and pulling all that together, question whether what we're doing is the right way to do it. Our program covers all the areas that we're in, assurance, financial reporting, sustainability. We want to be in business in the long term, not just the short term. Business management, tax, and we have a...